this is an extraordinary building that had a remarkable birth. The competition for the Sydney Opera House took place in the late 1950s, and the building took 14 years to construct. I have to say, I've seen some long projects, but this probably takes the cake. Wow. What Utsom magically did was so avant-garde and so unlike anything else on the planet that would come to be an icon, an emblem for the country. So this magnificent building, the Sydney Opera House, is undergoing a $273 million renovation for the 10.9 million people that visit it every year. It is an eloquent essay about culture, and in its 45-year history, it has also become a symbol of a relationship between people and place. It's not quite Derbyshire, though, is it? Australians have inhabited this house for nearly half a century. But in recent years, the house has felt in dire need of a bit of renewal. And it also requires some accessibility upgrades, a challenge that the chief exec, Louise Heron, knows all about. The Opera House has been an operating performing arts centre for 45 years, but it has for thousands of years been a place of storytelling and celebration and gathering for the Gadigal people who lived here for tens of thousands of years before us. And it's that spirit and magical energy that we try to capture all day, every day in what we do. The Opera House is in a decade of renewal, which was launched at our 40th anniversary in 2013. So we're exactly halfway through that decade of renewal at the moment. What we need to do in these works is to fix a couple of crucial issues that we have, and that is fixing the acoustics, accessibility, safety, and ensuring that the equipment is actually the equipment of the moment, because a lot of it has passed its use-by date. Hey! How do you do, Kevin? Louise Heron, you, very How nice to you? meet you. Welcome to the Opera House. Thank you very much. Dame Joan Sutherland yeah, yeah. is the person, La Stupenda, after whom this hall is named. Where was she from in Australia? Do you know she was... Uh... She was a Sydney person. So, oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> then you've got to name a theatre after her. So one of the things that you can see about the Opera House is that it was built at a time when accessibility wasn't really anything that people bore in mind. So what have you done for accessibility then? So we couldn't cut through the stairs because they're too narrow yeah. and we looked at some old drawings and we found that actually there was this ingenious passageway that could be made through the carcass of the Joan Sutherland Theatre. So this was plant rooms down here? This was plant rooms and this is all finished with this beautiful but it's, it's, brush box and stuff. It's seamless. Of course, buildings like this are experiences, and it's designed this as a set of experiences for people to, for everybody to enjoy. That's the thing for everybody, everybody. to enjoy. And but now everybody can, can enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Nice, nicely turned. So if I'm in my wheelchair, I come through uh, the steps there. How do you get up there? Well, you don't need to, Kevin. I got a lift. You just take the lift and see this beautiful bronze finish, as with all Opera House materials, bronze and concrete. This is all new. This is all brand new, and. How does it happen? Well, let me show you. How do you get that concrete beam terminates just here? It floats. It does. Wow. I mean, it sort of looks as though it's always been here, which is kind of, it's a challenge you face, isn't it? Because I imagine all kinds of architects and critics who are going to say, oh, you can't touch the granite, you can't, you, can't, you can't cut into things, but it looks like it was meant to be. That's remarkable. The difficulty of what they're doing here, of course, is revisiting structure, working with the engineering of an existing building, which itself was highly complex when it was put together. Imagine the, the challenges of trying to stitch in new work when you add new structure, when you position complex pieces of building together and rely on the, the forces of gravity to, uh, to help it all stand up, as I've done so with this exquisite model. This is my opera house, by the way. This is how I design it. It's good, isn't it? 
It's incredible working in a building like the Sydney Opera House, coming up against Utsun and Hall's differing design intents. Working at the house is incredibly challenging. The place operates 24-7, almost every day of the year. Um, patrons on site, performers back of house as well, and to get the building works coordinated around their activities is always a challenge. The glorious thing about architecture that already exists is that you can experience it, you can visit it. It's not just something to look at, but something to enjoy as a physical, tangible experience. And perhaps the, the greatest space of all, the one that I'm most excited about, is the concert hall. The concert hall is the biggest and most ambitious of the projects within the renewal works. We need to work very closely with our resident companies. We need to think of the millions of people that are going to enjoy the concert hall in the future and have we made it as adaptable and as perfect for every situation as we possibly can have. Concert hall renewal is going to be a challenge on a whole other level. We'll be focusing on improving the acoustics in the room, uh, improving accessibility and also a theatre services upgrade. We're rebuilding the entire inner structure of the hall. At the moment we do have the donuts over stage, the clear perspex rings. We're moving to these. There's a lot of names I have heard for them. Petals, um, I've heard today it's called the potato chip. <laughs> Their main purpose is to capture the sound of the orchestra over the stage and then get it out into the auditorium, into the boxes and the choir stall. We're really excited about that. So when do you, when do you hope to finish and be in? This current set of renewal works is going to be finished in 2022. Wow, and you think you can do that? You think you can? We've learned a lot from doing the Joan Sutherland Theatre. We have so many experts. We've done our planning down to yeah. six minute intervals. I'm pretty confident. What I love dreaming about is that at the 50th anniversary, we have really upgraded this whole part of the Opera House. This building is a masterpiece of human creative genius. I just love the Opera House. It's a jewel. We have to do everything we can to treasure it. The interventions that are being made here, the physical interventions, are to make the place more accessible, easier to get around, easier to use. But of course what they also represent is something else, a, a change in attitude about the emotional, the spiritual accessibility of architecture like this. That can allow anybody to come in and use it, see it, experience it, and enjoy things like this. Completely fabulous. I drink to this. <laughs>